All right, no, no hot sauce in this talk, but hopefully the teaching points will be fire. We'll see. This is the next eponym of ischemia, the de Winter T waves, which hopefully are review for many of you, but if not, let's all just get on the same page. So what are de Winter T waves? So de Winter T waves are the precordial leads, will have ST segment depression that upslopes into a big, broad, bulky T wave, and that is diagnostic of an LED occlusion. This pattern alone is diagnostic of an LED occlusion. It occurs in about two to 3% of all LED occlusions. These patients need to go to the cath lab. So let's see what that actually looks like on an EKG. All right, here's the upsloping SE segment depression. Here's the big, bulky, symmetric T wave. And then you will have AVR elevation, which is not surprising. So all AVR does is it mirrors the rest of the heart. So if your entire precordium has SD segment depressions down here, you're gonna have AVR elevations that are reciprocal to those depressions up here. So that's the expected finding. Okay, so again, whenever you have an EKG abnormality, you should ask yourself, what's my differential? What else could be going on here? So as you will see for SD segment depressions anteriorly with big T waves, this differential is not good. Many of these cases need to go to the cath lab. So first, let's talk about hyperacute T waves, right? There's actually no consensus definition of what a hyperacute T wave is. It's kind of like the Supreme Court decision on porn. It's just, you know it when you see it, right? It's the T wave is out of proportion to the QRS complex, all right? And classically, this will evolve over time into your SD segment elevation MI. They will be big, broad, and symmetric. So this is what they look like. Look at V3, right? You should be impressed by that T wave. This is an LAD occlusion. Remember the concept I told you about the QRS complex being like a spring, right? Under some normal circumstances, you could imagine that in V3, if you had an S wave that was pulled way, 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 way down, poof, maybe it'll snap back and give you a big T wave like that. However, in this case, that QRS is tiny. It should not be able to generate a T wave like that. This is clearly pathologic, okay? It kind of violates that principle. Now there is a question of whether or not de Winter T waves are a form of hyperacute T waves or if they are their own entity, right? So there's actually data for both. There's well-described patients who have persistent de Winter T waves, meaning you get repeat EKGs and the pattern does not change. They've also seen patients who have de Winter T waves that will evolve just like a standard hyperacute T wave into SD segment elevation MIs. Either way, go ahead and get your repeat EKGs. Those patients belong in the cath lab. Okay, next. Posterior MIs. Whenever you see anterior depressions, you should be worrying about the posterior wall. This EKG is diagnostic. This is a posterior STEMI. This should go to the cath lab. If you have trouble seeing it because it is relatively subtle, you go ahead and flip the EKG upside down and you hold it up to the light, look through the back of it, and this is what it'll look like, right? This is flipped upside down. Take a look at V3. Those upright R waves are now Q waves. The SC segment depression is now SC segment elevation, and the, R the T waves that were upright are now T wave inversions, right? So this is what's actually happening in the back of the heart. And you can imagine a Wellens pattern that is now reperfusing the posterior heart where you get that type B deep symmetric T wave that could give you a much bigger upright T wave when you actually capture the EKG in the front. This is the patient who goes to the cath lab. So whether or not you think it's a posterior STEMI or you think it's de Winters, you send them to the right place. Next, which I'm sure many of you guys were already thinking about is hyperkalemia, right? Big peaked T waves, but these T waves look different from ischemic T waves, right? So you can start obsessing over T wave morphology a little bit, but these are much more pointy, right? The type you don't wanna sit on. It's as if someone took a fishing hook and kind of caught the top of the T wave and pulled it to the top right-hand part of the screen. It is very asymmetric. It's not the bulky symmetric T wave of the hyperacute T wave, but check a point of care potassium if you're worried. Now, there's also these normal variants that typically go along with benign early repolarization patterns, so they will not have ST segment depression. And you can see, just by looking at the CKG, those T waves may be large, but they are not out of proportion to the preceding QRS complexes. So these do not actually look like hyperacute T waves. So the de Winter pattern, kind of sear this in your memory, precordial leads, upsloping ST segment depression, into big bulky T waves that may evolve over time or they may remain static, meaning persistent on repeat EKGs. So this is the pattern that indicates the presence of an LED occlusion. They go to the cath lab. This alone is diagnostic. So if you see anything that looks like this, go ahead and get your serial EKGs, get a point of care potassium to rule out hyperkalemia and do not hesitate to send the patient to the cath lab. Thank you.